Hey there, welcome to part two of my 25 things to do in Ho Chi Minh City in 2024 list. If you haven't watched part one yet, give it a watch after this because I feature another 14 ideas for things to keep you occupied while you're here. They're not only perfect for travellers, but also for people living here like me, who sometimes need a little inspiration when that friend or family member suddenly tells you they're finally coming to visit. Thanks heaps for watching. I hope you find it useful. If you do, give it a like and share it with those friends and family. Righto then, let's get into it. Vietnam's better known for more highbrow cultural events for tourists like the previously mentioned Ted R show at the Opera House or tours on the back of motorbikes driven by young ladies in Ao Yai, Vietnam's national dress. No, that doesn't make this list, uh, but not Pro wrestling. Somewhere in the back blocks of District 7, an outer southern suburb of Saigon, you can find pro wrestling events held throughout the year in a hangar like structure on the lot of a local film studio. It's dark, gritty, sweaty, but highly entertaining as local stars with names like Rocky Huynh, Sid Huynh, Venom Shank, and the British Horror among others, throw themselves at each other in the ring and out of it, while 300 plus of their adoring but sweaty fans sit ringside, urging them on in a pulsating display of guts and stupidity, all in the name of entertainment. Tickets to bouts are hot, with VIP tickets for the upcoming March 16 Spring Bash already sold out. If you're planning to be in town on the 16th, get online now and secure a ticket for a night of fun, rarely experienced by travellers to Vietnam that provide an opportunity to mix with the locals. It's common knowledge that a lot of pretty dark stuff has happened here in Saigon throughout its history. After all, it was colonised by the French, then of course there was the war, and the city for a long time was controlled by underworld gangsters. But for history buffs, the locations where some of the darkest things that have happened are getting increasingly harder to find with the passage of time and the development and growth of modern day Saigon as buildings are demolished to make way for modern structures that don't necessarily acknowledge the past. Well, last year in a series of short videos, Videos, I introduced viewers to eight dark locations in Saigon where some pretty nasty stuff went down, including where the monk Wang Du self-immolated at a Saigon intersection to protest the Vietnam War, and a former French colonial era police station that became a torture chamber for captured freedom fighters taking on the French colonial government of the time. That place in particular, while quite small and takes very little time to see throughout, leaves a lasting impression on visitors and demonstrates it's just how brutal the French were back then. Check out the videos in the shorts category on my channel. If you're into dark, gritty, true crime kind of stuff, I think you'll like these stories. Then you can use them to help create your own self-guided tour of the city. Hey there, sorry to interrupt the video. I just wanted to let you in on something and it's not a sponsored post, so please don't swipe away. I just wanted to let you know that due to unforeseen circumstances during the making of this video, I had to remove one of the things to do on the list. It was out of my control. I'd already recorded most of it and I just had to come up with another idea to make sure that I had 25 in this list. And what I've come up with is this one. And the first place to go to here in District 3 is Bungor Market. It's a wholesale market and uh, they sell everything from clothes, shoes, food, uh, seafood, street food, you name it. It's a really good market to go to. It's a morning market. Make sure you get here early. I'm filming this at like 9.30 in the morning in April, so it's the hottest time of the year and I'm already baking, so any time of the year really. Make sure you get here early in the morning. Um, there are food sellers here, so you can have breakfast here. There's some great breakfast options. It's really cheap. It's really interesting. Um, the locals are really friendly here as well. I'm always chatting to them. They always want to know about me, so really cool. And it's just outside of the city centre. It's not too far, in District 3. Following that, I suggest you come to this location. It's an apartment complex. It's quite large and uh, it was built in the late 60s after the Tet Offensive. And this area was allegedly levelled and then uh, the US military, I believe, um, built this apartment complex for people to live in. 
and it's still here today and it's really, really interesting. It's a massive community in itself. Um, and there's no, no reason for them to leave here. There's everything. In fact, I'm going to have a haircut in just a moment. There's a barber shop down the street. Uh, there's plenty of places to eat and drink and check out. It's just a fascinating place to come to and have a look to, to see what it's really like to live in this area. So um, I'll leave all the details in the description below so you can come and check it out. Okay, thanks for getting this far. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following me. And let's get on with the list. I get that many people don't see this as their idea of fun on a holiday, but if you want to get amongst true Vietnamese culture and life, then a visit to a wet market is a must. Wet markets are usually attached to regular central markets, and it's where the local community typically buys their seafood and meat. They're cheap and have an amazing variety of produce, but they can be pretty grotty and messy affairs, not to mention confronting for some people, because much of the produce is still alive and then slaughtered once purchased on site before your eyes. Chickens are rammed into cages, geese tethered together at the feet in the hot sun, and frogs skinned alive and still kicking waiting to be sold. But hey, that's just the everyday reality of these markets, whether you agree with it or not. They aren't for the faint-hearted and especially not vegans and animal rights activists. But if you're okay with it, as they say, once you've done one, they're all the same after that. Oh, and by the way, Bentan Market, Ho Chi Minh City's most famous market and tourist draw card in the centre of town, doesn't count. There are scores of other markets just outside the city centre, off the tourist trail, that are authentic and where vendors rarely see the bug-eyed surprise on the faces of tourists as they marvel at what's being sold down the narrow streets and alleyways of local neighbourhoods. Vietnam isn't known to be an overtly religious country, although most people admit to belonging to one religious faith or another, if asked. Having said that, there are places of worship all over Ho Chi Minh City, reflecting the number of Buddhist, Christian, Muslim, Hindu and Gaudai adherents. Typically, in either the grounds or just outside the grounds of any place of worship, you'll find food for sale that reflects that religion's dietary requirements. In the vicinity of Buddhist temples, for example, you'll find small eateries catering for vegetarians or non-practicing Buddhists observing vegetarian days, days on which they choose not to eat meat that usually fall on the 1st and 15th of each month. Some eateries might even be closed on those days. Mosques around Ho Chi Minh City almost always have food available in their grounds or in the nearby streets. The mosque on Dom Yu Street next to the Sheridan Hotel is a good example and there are a number of halal restaurants in the surrounding area. Not too far from where I live is a small Jum community who are practicing Muslims and right by their mosque you can find a small number of vendors cooking up halal dishes around prayer times. It's a really fascinating and tasty aspect of Vietnamese culture you might want to check out. The Vietnamese love nothing more than to let their hair down at the end of a long day or week and during public holidays. They often do this by belting out karaoke in the streets, flocking to bars and clubs and partaking in the national pastime known as nhô, which is when friends and family catch up at a local wang nhau for something to eat and to down a bunch of beers. Occasionally large festival type music events are held here throughout the year but they can be few and far between. In terms of a consistent and vibrant live music scene that you might be accustomed to, Ho Chi Minh City lacks compared to big cities in other countries like Australia for example. But there are some small venues here where you can scratch that live gig itch. For example one such venue is the long running Yoko Cafe in District 3. Yoko's been around for at least 20 years. It's definitely been around the whole time I've been here and not only do they feature live local bands covering all kinds of genres most nights of the week, they also host bands from around the region. Another one is Acoustic Bar which now has three venues in Ho Chi Minh City and also really worth checking out is Biker Shield which holds regular live music events in an awesome renovated old shop house in District 1. Anyway I've left locations in the description if you feel like you want to rock out when you're in Ho Chi Minh City. For whatever reason this street in Saigon's Chinatown district doesn't get much love on travel pages and YouTube, perhaps because it's off the usual well-beaten tourist trail and takes a little bit of getting to from the city centre. I tell you what, 
it's totally worth making the effort to get here. Ha Dun Win is a street solely dedicated to Sui Gao dumplings that are incredibly hard to stop yourself gorging on. Here you can get them fried or steamed in noodle soup, basically however you want them, right along the street. Dian Dian is probably the best known joint along this strip and I've been coming here for years, but hey, you could probably just about go anywhere along here and find a winner. How one of these places along here hasn't earned a Michelin gong is beyond me. This one will take you out of town on a day trip, but it's still technically in Ho Chi Minh City, even though it's around 50 kilometers south of the city. Gan Ye is one of 24 districts that make up Ho Chi Minh City, but it's the only one comprising a UNESCO listed mangrove forest. How the mangrove forest came into being after the war is another story in itself, but it's the rather unusual whale temple in the district's largest town that makes this attraction interesting. In the small township of Gan Dan by the ocean, there's a whale temple that the fisher folk of the local area regularly come to visit and pray for good luck and safe passage during the fishing season. And inside this temple is the intact skeleton of a small whale that washed ashore back in the 1970s. Fishing communities along the southern coastline of Vietnam worship whales. During mid-autumn each year around September, the people of Gan Dan hold a festival in the whale's honour with a street parade and festival. After a flotilla of local fishing boats decked out in colourful paint, flags and banners have return from paying their respects to the whales, both real and mythical, offshore in the East Sea. It doesn't sound overly romantic, I know, but you have to admit it's intriguing. I'm talking about dining in an old bank vault. Isn't this idea mint? You see, the Win Tai Bin neighborhood is one of the oldest and most historic neighborhoods in the city. And it's also what you might call the top end of town, owing to it long being the financial center of the inner city. There are banks all around here, including the imposing building of the State Bank of Vietnam constructed in 1928 on the site where I believe in Indochina's first piastre note was issued way back in 1891, which gets me to the Ol' Mi Wine Cellar right across the street from one of the old State Bank buildings. In fact, the Ol' Mi Wine Cellar occupies one of the State Bank's old bank vaults from the time before Vietnam's reunification in 1975. From the front entrance, you go down some stairs and then into a short tunnel that acts as a cramped but spacious enough dining area, which also leads you to the bank vaults that can seat up to a about 20 people inside. If you're prone to feeling claustrophobic, then this venue might not be for you. But I've dined here and I found it quite cozy without making me feel like I was never gonna see the light of day again. On that note, if you're wondering just how safe things are, especially given that Saigon is said to be sinking, the walls were constructed with meter thick concrete and reinforced with steel. I don't know about you, but I think this one is on the money. As Vietnam's GDP has risen over the years and it's taken taken a more active role in geopolitical relations, there have been moves to eradicate the amount of fake goods on shelves in markets here. But it's hard to keep a good thing down. It's still possible to go on shopping sprees in places like Bintan Market for fake Rolexes, designer handbags, wallets and runners. Even if things aren't high-end brands, it's actually quite a lot of fun just to go and haggle the price with vendors. And if you can speak a little bit of Vietnamese, it's even better. I recently got one of them down to 80000 for a t-shirt that he'd originally offered to me for 300,000. I didn't buy it, but I reckon I could have got him down even further. There are plenty of bargains to be had. Other markets worth checking out are Saigon Square and the Russian market, which is traditionally great for picking up clothing like North Face jackets, especially if you need something for up north in the winter months, or you're planning a motorbike trip in the south during the rainy season. One phrase you need to keep handy in your back pocket in Ho Chi Minh City while haggling is Makwa. After that, it's on. And finally, this is another one that's a day trip outside the city centre, but it's still technically in Ho Chi Minh City. Gu Chi is one of the 24 districts that make up the city and is famous for the war era tunnels and shooting range around 50 kilometres away. Aside from that, Ho Chi Minh City's first and only gin distillery is located nearby called Lady Ju Gin. And the really cool thing is the crew at Lady Ju are able to organise visits to their distillery by appointment. So if you'd like to check it out, get in contact with them directly via 
via the link in the description. About a year ago, I had an amazing and pretty tipsy <laughs> day out on one of their trips and I did a video about it, so I'll leave that in the description too. The trip included a boat ride up and down the Saigon River to and from the distillery with beverages on board, of course, and it gave me a great look at life on the river that I wouldn't usually get to experience, along with a fun tour of the distillery and plenty of tastings. So keep this one in mind, it's a very unique experience, but definitely get in touch with the guys at Lady Chu in advance, especially because they prefer group bookings before they run trips due to the logistics. Well, there you have it, that list should keep you busy and entertained for a while. If you think I've missed any, be sure to drop them in the comments and I'll think about adding them to the list for 2025. Take care and stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.